everybody, it is your girl K Ray, and you're probably wondering, what are you even doing? How is this any different? What is this doing? What is this doing? I am starting daily vlogs. I know, it's a huge deal. It's a challenge for myself to be putting out a new vlog or a video for the next 365 days. But here's the catch. I know there's a lot of daily vloggers and there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are doing this on a consistent basis. But for me, I have to do something completely new every single day. So something I've never done before. And that is gonna be pretty, pretty intense. All sorts of things, dares, challenges, you name it, I'll be doing it. I'll be working with artists, comedians, YouTubers, actors, musicians, lawyers, politicians. A lot of bucket list things, which is really interesting because when I was doing my list of what I potentially can be filming for the next year, it was so funny that I've already done a lot of things I wanted to do in my life. Just gonna give myself a little pat in the back there. Anarchly, by the way, is gonna continue me being an actor, having web series, films, all that kind of stuff is still gonna continue. This is just separate actually for myself to grow as a brand, as K Ray, as a YouTuber, as an actor, and creating more opportunities. So I really, really wanna encourage all of you to get out there, do things you've never done before. Something new that I'm gonna be doing today is I'm officially opening up about my depression and anxiety. I know, what? Kiri has depression and anxiety? I'm not gonna lie, this is a bit of a challenge for me. I've never openly talked about my depression and anxiety. I advocate for mental health awareness all the time. Even shot a short film on mental health called Haneri. I have openly talked about it recently in workshops. It is definitely something that might take a lot of people by surprise. I want to be able to share this because I think it's important for a lot of young viewers to know that you're not alone. My depression, as far as I know, started when I was 12 years old. My Nanaji passed away. My Nanaji was basically my father. He was the first one to teach me how to write. He was the first one who taught me how to say my first word, which was Papa, what I used to call him. I lived with him, him and my nanny. So when he passed away, it was probably the most difficult thing I've ever gone through. At such a young age, I was literally losing my father and I lost him to cancer. He was pretty strong though, had a few years fighting cancer. So when I lost him, it was really, really hard on me, especially being a preteen where hormones are all over the place, you're not understanding all these changes in your body, in your behavior. I became very suicidal at the age of 13. I didn't know how to express myself. I didn't know how to talk to anyone about it. A lot of my friends at the time were just saying that I'm asking for attention. It has been pretty rough. It would come up in different ways, whether being through school, my relationships, my family, friends would come up over and over and over again. And I kept beating myself up about it because I just did not know how to deal with it. When I was 16, I had my first anxiety attack. Again, didn't know what was happening. I was at school. Someone in our family had passed away. It just re-triggered me, brought all that trauma back. I started crying, came to the point where I started hyperventilating. For anyone that ever is crying so much and you feel like you can't breathe, I know this sounds really ridiculous, but just like be one with yourself in that moment because you can be taken away when you're crying so much and you just wanna just drop to the ground. You feel like you're breaking down and you just wanna let it go. That is the worst thing you can do, especially when you're hyperventilating because my entire body went numb to the point where my even my tongue was numb. My friends were like literally dragging me down the stairs and my feet were just dragging. All my weight was on them. Imagine you're like super, super anxious. You don't know what's happening to you. You feel like you're literally gonna die. Like I'm not even joking. Anyone that has anxiety would know. We called the ambulance and the whole school was like watching. And I'm like, oh, this is so traumatizing. <laughs> what was even more traumatizing is when we went to my family doctor to find out what's going on. He who shall not be named. Obviously I've switched since then. After I told them like why I think it happened or what triggered it, he was like, well listen, we're all gonna die. You're gonna die, I'm gonna die, we're all gonna die. So what is the point of like crying over that? And then I just never wanted to talk about my anxiety again. Quite a few attacks after that, but I was able to manage it and control it for 
quite some time until about two years ago my depression kind of creeped up again which is ironic because I've been doing this for two years so it was scary because I saw myself really letting go just feeling like there is no point. There is no point of me being here. There is no point of me existing. At the time, I felt like I was becoming very spiritual. I was like, it's not even like I hate myself or I don't want to live because my life sucks. I couldn't deal with the emotional pain and burden that I was carrying. I felt like I was always carrying the world's burdens on my shoulder. Always thinking about other things that are happening around the world or other problems my friends were facing. Really, really empathetic. So I'm always taking on people's trauma and like carrying it as if it's my own. It would fluctuate but it got really, really bad recently. At this point, I just felt like my mind was just so foggy. Like I couldn't see. All these thoughts were just it was just like a tornado, literally a tornado inside. It was painful, oh my god. And I was like, I wish I could create physical pain, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit of a wuss, so I can't even take like a pinch. Like literally, it hurts too much. I just wanted to take a bunch of pills, do things that were really, really, really scary. It brings me back to the present moment and appreciating and feeling gratitude is when I think about how many of you are dealing with the same things and feeling the same pains and how you feel something with the work that I do. And I can't tell you how much that means to me to know that I've been able to impact someone's life. One person even means so much. Like, I promised myself I would not cry during this vlog. So not that tears are bad, tears are good. You want to cry? Cry, cry, cry. Feel your emotions. Because you know what we end up doing? We're suppressing our emotions and that's what I saw myself doing a lot. If anything, I would just take them home with me. And when I was alone is when I was really feeling this misery. And it wasn't that I was faking it. Like, of course, like, I was enjoying moments. Yeah. I really feel like I'm, I've always been super grateful. And I really do enjoy the moment that I'm in. It's really different when you're by yourself in your room, in your bed, in this space where you feel like nothing matters, I am nothing, and it's really, really shitty to be thinking that way. If any of you are feeling that way, I want you to know that I'm here with you, mind, body, and spirit, and I want you to understand that you will get through it. I'm not trying to make it sound like a miracle. You can get through it. I've been able to heal myself in many aspects of my life, really heal my inner child, give the love my inner child deserves. That's something that we really forget. I just felt like I had no control. I need you all to understand that you are in control. The universe will give you those lessons and if you don't really learn your lesson, that same thing is gonna happen again. And notice with this generation of folks, we're always running away from our problems, whether it being relationships, whether it being with our family. You're just avoiding all these things. Start healing within and seeing why are those certain patterns continuously happening. Like how I saw it, I was like, oh, this, these things just keep coming up in my life again. Oh no, why me? What is it within me? that I need to heal. Being able to look at yourself as your younger self. Would you ever say the things that you say about yourself now? We're so mean to ourselves. We're criticizing our physical physiques, our intellect, or our worthiness. Constantly putting ourselves down. So if you're putting yourself down, doesn't that make others to put you down? I know it sounds so cliche, but at the end of the day, if you don't love yourself, really difficult for you to be able to love others you can't look for validation by seeking love in others you need to find that validation with yourself you validate you i ended up seeking for help I've gone to counselors did not work for me because i've been so aware and understanding of what depression is and anxiety is and knowing that i actually do have it and confronting it it was hard for me to go to counselors because i was just hearing the same thing that i already knew for a lot of people it works out honestly i'm not trying to demean work of counselors or therapist but for me and this is from a personal experience it wasn't working for me i felt like i needed more i wanted to go further and deeper in understanding why it's there I met roz who became a really good friend of mine roz is a transformational coach she is i can say one of the most incredible people i've ever met i could feel a deep connection with her when we first actually hung out Roz is actually the one who challenged me to this 365 she helps people remove their limiting beliefs limiting beliefs are things that are 
blocking our true potential the beliefs that we've grown up to have about ourselves she does holistic healing through nutrition through mind body and spirit changing your thought patterns the gratitude exercises which was super amazing for me really really helped shift my mind reframing your past experiences so you can live a more peaceful life with counselors it was very on the surface of what you could do in that moment but with her i got to understand the root cause being able to understand why i have depression where it comes from there are like little experiences that we might have that we don't realize that might be traumatizing but it is how that builds up to be content in all aspects of my life i first start my assessment in march i was at 87 percent out of 100, meaning that my depression was high risk and it was very severe. And we just did my assessment last week. I am now at 29% out of 100. Yay! Yay to helping myself, yay to self-love, yay to self-growth, yay to eliminating depression and anxiety, fight it, yes. However, I'm not trying to say I'm healed. I am here and i am committed to working on myself this is why i'm doing the 365 challenge because i truly want to do this for myself to be able to document my growth in the next year thank you Roz, for for everything for being able to believe in my potential there are going to be days that i'm going to feel shitty and i'm not going to be able to work i need from all of you to encourage me and support me. I will try my best to make this as enjoyable as possible. You feel like you're ready to find ways of helping yourself. We're here. Roz is here. Go to her website. And this is the work that she does. I hope this encourages all of you to better yourselves. I hope you all stay on this journey with me. I love you all. Thank you. KRay 365 is about to begin. Release release this was one of my releases and this is so cliche the fact that everything is all black so my pinjapi isn't the greatest i want to be more fluent able to school my grandparents and i want to holler at more aunties every day we're gonna do a new pinjapi word it's docket docket means strength okay love you bye